This lesson is going to continue what we did yesterday with regards to parametric equations. We're now going to look at the polar side of this, um, or we're going to look at polar coordinate systems and equations of that. So we know um, that to convert from polar, or polar to parametric, that x is equal to r cosine of theta and y is equal to r times the sine of theta. Well, this actually defines how we create parametric equations from that. This can actually just be x of theta is equal to r cosine theta. And this r can be a function itself. So what we end up actually getting is that x of theta can be r of theta, a function in terms of theta, times the cosine of theta. And then y of theta can be r of theta times the sine of theta. So that is, um, these become and define, become the parametric equations for a polar graphing system. Um, and this is done basically in terms of r of theta is this function we have uh, that we're trying to convert into parametric equations. So um, anyway, given this Let's just call these parametric equations. Um, given these parametric equations, I have um, a way to find vertical tangents if I want. I can do vertical tangents when x prime of theta is equal to 0. And x prime of theta, um, given that we have this, is going to be a product rule derivative. So x prime of theta would have to be equal to the first r of theta times the derivative of the second, which would be negative sine theta, um, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Um, so plus cosine of theta times r prime of theta. And finally, um, if I want to get horizontal tangents, when y prime of theta is equal to 0. Um, that occurs when we have y prime of theta, which can be defined as the first times the derivative of the second. So r of theta cosine of theta plus um, second, which is sine of theta, or uh, times r prime of theta. That's the product rule derivative of that. Um, we have no conclusion, like we did before, when both of them are 0. So you have to kind of knock those out of the picture if you get that the x prime of zero or x prime of theta and y prime of theta are both zero. Um, also, then we have the slope of the tangent line dy dx defined as the slope of the tangent line is equal to this y prime of theta over x prime of theta, and y prime of theta I can simplify to just be r of theta cosine of theta plus r prime of theta sine of theta over, um, then we have negative r of theta sine of theta plus r prime of theta cosine of theta. Okay, three examples, and these are our doozies. So just bear with me on, on these three. Two of them are longer, one's really short. First two are longer. Um, find the horizontal and vertical tangents and points of tangency of r is equal to the sine of theta for theta between 0 and pi. Well, first things first, the graph of theta between 0 and pi for sine theta is actually just going to look like this. Um, it's a, if we think about theta going from 0 to its maximum value of 1 and back to 0, that's a circle, um, a circle of radius 1 half centered at 0, 1 half. But we don't have to know that to answer this question. Um, we get x of theta is defined as r of theta times the cosine of theta. Well, r of theta is the sine of theta, and cosine of theta, well, it's just cosine of theta. And by identities, um, the identities that you should know, this is equal to 1 half 
sine of two theta. Um, remember that sine two theta is equal to two sine theta cosine theta. So that is x of theta. Um, and let's move to y of theta. And just take a look at that. y of theta is equal to um, r of theta sine of theta, which is equal to sine of theta sine of theta or sine squared theta. Okay, now let's do derivatives. Um, the derivative of the uh, of x of theta, x prime of theta, is equal to, um, this would be cosine of 2 theta, and the derivative of y of theta would be equal to 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Remember, there's a chain rule going on there, and that's the same as the sine of 2 theta. So now um, let's move into the, uh, the nitty gritty of this. We're going to start with vertical. And this is going to take up a lot of space here. So just be prepared. X prime of theta is equal to 0 whenever the cosine of 2 theta is equal to 0. Um, and the cosine of 2 theta is equal to 0 anywhere that 2 theta is equal to we're going to start to list out values. 2 theta could be pi over 2, 2 theta could be 3 pi over 2, and 2 theta could be 5 pi over 2. And when I divide both sides by 2, I get theta could be equal to pi over 4, theta could be equal to 3 pi over 4, or theta could be equal to 5 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4 is outside of our domain, so that's out, and <clears throat> we just have these two. Then we look at what happens when theta is equal to pi over 4. So when theta is equal to pi over 4, we need to figure out what the x value is and what the y value is. Um, this requires a lot of just quick mastery of trigonometry. So this is going to be helpful as a flash review of trig. x of theta was defined as the sine of 2 times pi over 4 over 2, which is 1 half. And y of pi over 4 is the sine squared. So it's sine of pi over 4 quantity squared, which is 1 over root 2 squared, which is also 1 half. So we have this ordered pair 1 half, 1 half. And I know that there is a vertical tangent at x equals 1 half. So that's one of them. One to go. Theta is equal to 3 pi over 4 when we have x of 3 pi over 4. So I have the sine of 2 times 3 pi over 4 over 2, um, which is negative 1 half. Um, and y of 3 pi over 4 is still going to square it, so that's going to be 1 half. Um, so I get this ordered pair, negative 1 half, 1 half with an x value at negative 1 half. Okay, now we move into horizontal tangents. Horizontal occur when y prime of theta is equal to 0. And the derivative of sine squared, y prime of theta, is equal to, um, see we had y prime is sine 2 theta. So I want to basically figure out when is sine 2 theta equal to 0. And that is anywhere that 2 theta is equal to 0, or 2 theta is equal to pi or 2 theta is equal to 2 pi. And when I divide both sides by 2, I get theta is 0, theta is pi over 2, or theta is pi. But theta is pi is outside of our domain, so that gets axed out. And now we move into the same analysis we did before. When theta is equal to 0, I do x of 0, which is the sine of 2 times 0 over 2, which is 0. Then I do the uh, y of 0, which is the sine of 0 squared. So we have 0, 0, where y is equal to 0. That's a horizontal. And then finally, we have theta is equal to pi over 2. So I get x of pi over 2, which is the sine of 2 times pi over 2. So it's the sine of pi over 2, which is also 0. Then y of pi over 2 is the sine of pi over 2 squared. It's 1. 0 comma 1 with y is equal to 1. Horizontal tangent. Okay, second long example. 
Um, let's do the same thing to the equation r is equal to 2 times 1 minus the cosine of theta. Um, and this is going to be for theta between 0 and 2 pi. Same thing, we want to find out vertical and horizontal tangents as well as any points of tangency. Okay, let's start with uh, my function x of theta. So we're going to examine x of theta. x of theta is equal to 2 times 1 minus cosine of theta times the cosine of theta. And then let's look at y of theta is 2 times 1 minus the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. Okay, we're going to try to maybe organize this a little bit vertically. and we'll see how this goes, um, if I have enough space. So x prime of theta is going to be equal to 2 times, uh, let's do, um, let's see, should I do product rule on this? Sure. First, derivative of the second is negative sine of theta plus second, then the derivative of the first is the sine of theta. So what I end up with is negative sine of theta plus two sine theta cosine theta. And if I factor out a um, sine of theta, I get two cosine of theta minus one. And we want to figure out when this is equal to zero, and that's going to occur anywhere where sine of theta is equal to zero or cosine of theta is equal to one half on my domain. And this could be theta values of zero, pi, or for the cosine part, pi over three, five pi over three. Okay, then I'm going to try to do y prime of theta. And y prime of theta is equal to 2 times the first derivative of the second plus the second. And the derivative of the first would be another sine of theta. Um, so I end up with 2 times the cosine of theta minus the cosine squared theta plus the sine squared theta, which I'm going to write as 1 minus cosine squared theta, so that everything's in terms of cosine. If I factor a negative out, I get cosine squared theta, or 2 cosine squared theta minus cosine of theta minus 1, which then factors into um, cosine, or sorry, 2 cosine of theta plus 1 and the cosine of theta minus 1. And that's going to be mean that cosine of theta should be equal to negative one half or cosine of theta should be equal to one. My theta values where this is occurring um, are two pi over three, four pi over three, or zero. Well, zero now we have to exclude as possible vertical horizontal because that's um, present in both. Okay, so now we have to examine um, these three, five, five different places. This is why this takes forever. Um, so vertical, uh, we have theta is equal to pi, and we're going to want to actually plug this in. So x of pi and y of pi. So x of pi is 2 times 1 minus the cosine of pi, which is 1 plus 1 times negative 1, excuse me, negative 4, and y of pi is 2 times 1 plus 1 times 0, or 0. So I get this ordered pair of negative 4, 0, and the vertical is x equals negative 4. Then we go theta is equal to pi over 3. I want to do x of pi over 3. So I have 2 times 1, um, let's see, this is 1 minus the, I have to go back up here, cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Then the cosine of pi over 3 is still 1 half, and I get, see, I cancel those 2's out, and I get 1 half. Uh, y of pi over 3 is 2 times 1 minus 1 half times the sine, which is root 3 over 2. So those 2's cancel, and I get um, root 3 over 2. So I now have this ordered pair 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2 with a vertical tangent of x is equal to 1 half. 
Um, then finally, we have theta is equal to 5 pi over 3. So I'm going to plug in this point x of 5 pi over 3 and y of 5 pi over 3. Um, we have 2 times 1 minus a half times a half is a half. Uh, y of 5 pi over 3 just changes the sign on the uh, sign or sign on the sign part. So this actually gives me a negative root 3 over 2, uh, which gives me negative root 3 over 2 as a total. And so then my ordered pair is 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2 with an x equals 1 half. So vertical tangents are all here. Now we go to horizontals. Um, and since we've already done the legwork and figuring out where they occur, this is, process is just extremely similar. Start with theta is equal to 2 pi over 3. Theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 means I need to do x of 2 pi over 3. We're going to make this marker a little bit darker. I don't like its color right now. There we go. x of 2 pi over 3 is 2 times the cosine. So we have 1 minus the cosine. Cosine is negative 1 half. So 1 minus a negative 1 half is positive 1 half times the negative one half, that is the cosine, and I get negative three halves. Y of two pi over three is the two times one plus one half times a positive root three over two. Those cancel, I get three halves times this, I get three root three over two, which means that the ordered pair is negative three halves, um, and the Y value is three root three over two, and my Horizontal tangent is y equals 3 root 3 over 2. One more to go. Then we get, uh, we have theta is equal to 4 pi over 3. x of 4 pi over 3 is 2 times 1 plus 1 half times a negative 1 half. The x value is identical, but the y value is going to be opposite. You're going to see these patterns happen a lot. Just make sure you prove it. 2 times 1 plus 1 half, the y is now below the x-axis, so this becomes a um, negative root 3 over 2, which means this is negative 3 root 3 over 2, which means the ordered pair is 3 halves, negative 3 root 3 over 2, with a y equal to negative 3 root 3 over 2. Circle, circle. Okay, finally, uh, we need to talk about tangent lines at the pole. Um, a tangent line is a y equals mx plus b equation. We're going to make it a slope-intercept form, make it really easy. Um, so tangent lines at the pole, and at the pole means the origin. So the example we're going to use um, is f of theta is equal to, um, let's just call it r of theta. Make it easier. r of theta is equal to 2 cosine of 3 theta. And at the origin, we know that r is equal to 0. So basically I'm asking at what theta is r equal to 0. So let's take 2 cosine of 3 theta, set it equal to 0. Um, this occurs anywhere that 3 theta is equal to pi over 2. 3 theta is equal to, um, I could say 3 pi over 2. And it could also be 3 theta is equal to 5 pi over 2. And I could keep going. But I want to restrict my thetas to be between 0 and pi because this will actually draw itself completely for thetas between 0 and pi. In fact, I'm going to show you that here in a second. Um, so if I come over here to this, here's a graph between 0 and pi, and so I get three complete petals of that if I draw it completely. Um, so let's solve for this. I get theta is equal to pi over 6, theta is equal to pi over 2, and theta is equal to 5 pi over 6. So all of these are between 0 and uh, pi. In fact, I'm going to say theta is between 0 and pi because that's one complete cycle of it. It could actually keep going, but it's not going to affect um, what the tangent lines are. It's just going to repeat itself. So all you want to do now is convert these three into y equals mx plus b. And since they cross through the origin, we don't really have to worry about the b value 0. So theta is equal to pi over 6. Let's take the tangent of both sides. We get the tangent of theta is equal to the tangent of pi over 6, or y over x is equal to root 3, or y equals root 3x. 
If I take the tangent of both sides here, I get y over x is equal to undefined. Well, guess what? This is just a vertical line. That's x equals 0 um, if I do that one. This one is just the opposite of the one that's before. If I do it, I'm just going to get y equals negative root 3x. So these three are my tangents. And if I go back over here and graph them, I would get, let's graph y equals 0, um, y equals square root of 3x, and y equals negative square root of 3x. Okay, zoom in sufficiently far, and we can start to get an idea of why and how those might be tangents of this. Actually, this is like a horrible, horrible way to see this. So uh, let's delete two of these and get one of them going. I'm thinking that I might have done something wrong here. Let's see if that's better. Aha. Let's swing back over. I did do something wrong which I didn't catch last year and I didn't catch the first time I tried to record these notes. Kind of glad I fixed this. Um, the tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3. And this is negative 1 over root 3. So now swinging back to the graph, I'll just show one of these and, be, and call it. Um, you can see how that green line's tangent to that. And then y equals 0 is tangent. Um, I don't want to do y equals 0. I want to do x equals 0. There we go. Let's do a lowercase x. Nope. There we go. Um, and turn that on. And you can see there's the vertical line happening. And if I just stick a negative in front of here, that's enough to show the other one. So just put a negative. Boom. Green hits on the other one. Okay. We're done.